Hi friends and welcome back to my channel! Today I will be doing my August TBR and I'm so excited about it because I have a fun and scary challenge and I'll also be participating in the Tropical Readathon, one of my absolute favorite readathons of all time. I won't be randomizing my TBR this time, mainly because, as I said, I have this one challenge and I have the Tropical Readathon. Randomizing, adding that to this thing will be too much. You might have seen in an earlier video where I celebrated my two year anniversary in booktube. What I did in that video was I was looking at the last year's TBRs. For every book I had not read, I gave myself a tally, a point. Those points turns into punishment prompts. That video sort of freaked out. If you ever want to see someone literally give up editing a video, check that one out, because that's what happened. I gave up, like it was too, it was too wild. Basically, I got a total of 50 unread books. The original plan was to draw a point for every three books. That would add up to like 16 or 17 prompts, I think, which is just insane. So instead, I'm gonna take these 50 books, divide that number with 10, and we will draw five punishment prompts today. These are punishments that I will need to do in August. I'm hoping to do it like a week-long thing where I can vlog it as well. We're gonna have to see. So not only am I doing a really epic readathon in August, I'm also doing some punishment prompts. Let's start by drawing the prompts and deciding on my punishment TBR first. Okay, I put the notes in another jar. I don't have another jar, I have another pot. So I put like the 15 prompts or something in this pot. It looks like a huge coffee mug, it's not. It's a pot for plants, uh, but I have the prompts in here. So let's draw some prompts. First one. So first punishment prompt is read Gemina. Okay, main thing from my video where I went through all my previous TBRs is that I have Gemina on so many TBRs from the last two years and I still have not read it. My main goal is to read it. So this is perfect. This is the book I need to read. I've had it on so many TBRs. I don't know, like we're in the double digits at least. And I am super excited about this because I really did enjoy Illuminae. For some reason I never get to it. I keep putting it on TBRs and I keep not reading it. But damn it, I, I, I know I've said it so many times before, but damn it, I'm gonna read it this month. That's the first punishment prompt. I'm very happy about that. Let's move on. Coffee cup. This one. This one is calling to me. What will it be? Book I regret buying. I need to have a look on my shelves. Okay, so there's one book that I maybe regret buying. I'm not certain. I don't really regret book buys. And if I do regret them, it's after years of trying to read that book and never getting to it and then deciding to DNF it. So this is one book I bought actually this year. And I bought it during the Swedish book sale, the huge book sale, where I completely broke my book buying ban. I don't majorly regret this, but I don't think I will love it. It's not what I typically read. And perhaps I should have also gotten it as a paperback instead of a hardback. The book is Box by Camilla Lekberg and Henrik Fexius. This is a Swedish book written by a Swedish author duo. They started writing a series together like two years ago or something. This book was on a huge sale. I personally love the cover. Obviously my favorite color is red. I do think it looks pretty cool. It's some sort of mystery about a woman that is found dead in a box that has a bunch of swords in it. The police sort of have to work together with a mentalist who is an expert in like body language and magic. I don't think I've looked up reviews for this one actually. I have not read anything by either one of these two authors either. The reason I regret buying this is because I typically don't read Swedish authors except for that one guy. <laughs> I haven't had the best of luck when I've read Swedish books. But I was intrigued by this one. I've heard some buzz around it when it first was released. As I said, I like the cover as well. I'm intrigued by both of these authors. It is quite a massive book. Like, it wasn't expensive. It was on this huge sale, so that is fine. But it's quite a massive book, and perhaps I should have waited and gotten it as a paperback instead. But I guess this works as a punishment. I'm not excited about it, and I could have probably saved the shelf space from not buying this one. Okay, next up we have... Oh, dropped it. Ah, I'm not cheating, I'm promising. Oldest on one to read list. I think I already know which one this is. I'm gonna have Shankers 
on my August TBR. So I'm on my Goodreads want to read list and I'm gonna sort by date added and reverse it. And the oldest book on my want to read list is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. <laughs> I have not had the best of luck with Neil Gaiman. I did not enjoy Neverwhere. I did not enjoy Good Omens. So this will be interesting. And this is another chunker, I think. Yes, it's over 600 pages. <laughs> but it's good that I'm getting this off my oldest want to read. By the end of August, I want to have either read this one or at least given it a go so I can DNF it and change up my oldest want to read. What's the next punishment prompt? Back to the huge mug. This one, let's see. 200 pages from longest book on my TBR. I believe it was Jane who gave me this suggestion for a punishment prompt. The longest book on my want to read, the longest book on my TBR is War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. I personally think this prompt is great because I keep saying, I've been saying for one and a half years now that I want to read this book. I have it on all of my like yearly TBRs, on all of my yearly challenges. I keep talking about the fact that I need to get to this one and read it. So I think this prompt is great, that at least it's like a kickstart to starting this book and hopefully finish it this year, <laughs> although it's getting more and more challenging. So the aim is to read 200 pages from this book. Maybe I should set up like a schedule for myself to read like 10 pages a day or something from War and Peace. That way I will be able to get through it. This is the fifth prompt, I think. Fifth punishment prompt. Cool. Let's see. Uh oh. An intimidating genre. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna be a bit kinder to myself and try to be strategic about this. There are two genres, three genres I can think of that I would be intimidated by. It would either be horror, mainly because I have not read much horror at all, uh, then historical fiction. It, it doesn't always hit the right way, okay? Historical fiction can be quite tedious and slow sometimes, depending on the story. Or the third one, classics. I'm gonna go with a classic because I want to go with a shorter book. I will listen to The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And that is because it will work out in my TBR for the Tropical Readathon. Those are the five books I must read to complete my punishments. I actually did quite well last year with my punishments. I did complete all of my punishments, so I'm hoping that it will go well this year as well. Let's now move on to the fun part, <laughs> the Tropical Readathon TBR. What do I plan on reading for Tropical Readathon this year? I love the Tropical Readathon. It's one of my absolute favorite readathons. I think it's a great readathon with great prompts, great teams, great hosts. Everything is incredible with this readathon and I always love participating in it, no matter what. The fun thing is that this will be my fifth time participating in the readathon, which is so much fun. And every time I have participated, I have signed up for a new team. So I've never been in the same team more than once. I've been team fantasy, team romance, team sci-fi and team literary contemporary historical fiction. That leaves two teams for me to choose from, either team mystery, horror and thriller or team poetry nonfiction. The team I will be joining this time is team mystery, horror and thriller. It doesn't really matter that much with team you join because it won't really affect the common prompts. You don't need to read books that match the genre of the team that you are in. You also don't need to read the specific team book for that team. You can read other teams team books. What made me want to pick mystery, horror, thriller this time is because one of the team prompts. So every team have two specific team prompts that you get bonus points for. And there's one of the prompts that I saw this opportunity in and I want to do it. Let's just go through all of the prompts in the Tropical Readathon and what I plan on reading for them. I'm not saying I will be able to read all of these books, but it's just fun to plan books for all of the 15 prompts. The first team challenge is to read a book featuring the mysterious invite trope. I know that there are so many books with this prompt, and I typically do really enjoy those books, but it's just hard finding them. Like you don't always know. The one I'm gonna go for for this prompt is The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. I believe it's the same author as the one who wrote like One of Us is Lying and such. I might be wrong. It's about some cousins that barely know each other, but they receive a letter inviting them to work at their grandmother's island resort for the summer. So that's the mysterious invite. And then something will happen, I guess because basically the grandmother has disinherited them. So they all think this is a good chance for them to reconnect with her and get back into the graces of the grandmother and get back their inheritance, I guess. 
So yeah, Family Secrets, YA Thriller Mystery, could be a good time. The second team challenge, which is the one that made me go, yes, this is the team I'm joining, is read a book featuring the undead trope. When I first saw this, I wasn't that excited actually, but then I scrolled the recommendations list by the hosts and I saw a recommendation for this trope that made me so excited because the book they recommended for the undead trope is Warm Bodies by Isaac Marion. I read this before. I watched the movie when it came out in like 2013, I think, like Warm Bodies with Nicholas Holt. I love that movie. I was so excited about it. So I decided to pick up the book as well, read the book, although I had already seen the movie. The book was so much fun as well. It was hilarious. If the movie is like our being an angsty teen, the book is more like our being a philosophical bachelor. If you don't know, it's a zombie story about R, who is a zombie, and Julie, who fights zombies, and they meet each other, and they sort of fall in love, and it's a lot of humor in these books, I think, and a lot of humor in the movie. I remember loving this when I read it for the first time. I thought it was so much fun, and I'm very excited to reread it, actually, and see if it lives up to my memories and what I thought of it back then. And I might actually watch the movie while I'm at it. So this is why I'm excited about the team. This is why I'm excited about the trope. I'm excited to read Warm Bodies again. Then for every team, there are two suggestions for team books that you can read. I'm not really that intrigued by any of the team books for the mystery horror thriller team. I would consider to read Into the Drowning Deep, but I can't really find it anywhere. It's not on Scribd, it's not at my library, I'm not gonna buy it. So that's not really an option, but I might instead read the books for Team Romance. So either My Mechanical Romance or Spoiler Alert. I'm very excited about these two actually. <laughs> Let's now talk about the common tropes. The first trope is Absent slash Dead Parents. For this one, I actually plan on reading the sequel to Warm Bodies, which is called the Burning World. I have only read Warm Bodies. I have not read either the prequel or the following books. I didn't even realize that this was a trilogy. I knew this book had a prequel out and I had been meaning to get to it, but then I forgot about it. But I was not aware that this book turned into a trilogy, actually. I want to read all of the books in this series. That's my goal. So for Absent slash Dead Parents, I'm gonna go with The Burning World because since I said that R is a zombie, I'm guessing his parents are absent. And also Julie, I believe she lost her mother. Next trope is the love triangle trope. And for this one, I will be reading The Great Gatsby. This was one of my options for this trope, but it was not what I was gonna go for. I wanted to read Felix Ever After instead. But then when I got that punishment prompt to read an intimidating genre, I decided to go with The Great Gatsby for this one instead. I've seen the movie, like the modern one with Leo DiCaprio. We'll see what I think of it. I have no freaking clue. But from what I remember from the movie, and also from what I've seen on, on all of the recommendations lists, there is a love triangle in this one. Next trope is the new kid in town trope, difficult tropes in my opinion. This time I hope to read Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. I'm dabbling in middle grades every now and then. It's not my typical read, but I sometimes do like to give them a go. I know that this is a very popular series. I think it's about this girl who gets picked for something and she has to move into this new town that is magical. So yeah, she becomes a new kid in town. We then have a dark academia trope. Now a book that I would really, and I truly mean really, would like to read for this prompt is the Secret History, but the issue is that this is a really long book, almost 600 pages. I already have so much reading I need to do in August, so I'm gonna once again try and set myself up for success by reading something else or listening to something else. The book I want to read for this prompt is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is another YA thriller, I think. It's about this famous private school and there's some sort of mystery. That's all I know. I've been excited about it for a while, so I do think this will be good, yeah. So we have an academic setting and we have a mystery, it's YA. I will listen to it on script, it will be great. Next prompt is a holiday trope. Now this means that you can either read a book where the characters go on holiday or vacation, or it can be a book that takes place during a holiday, like Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving, whatever. For this one, I plan on reading People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I borrowed this from my library and I feel like this would be perfect. It's about Poppy and Alex who are best friends. For most of the year they live far apart but every summer for a decade they have taken one glorious week of vacation together. I've read Beach Read 
by Emily Henry. I was not the biggest fan of this one, but I've heard that many preferred this one to that. Next prompt is Blast from the Past, another one that I think is pretty difficult to find books for sometimes, but I saw on a website that this book has this prompt, so the book I hope I'm reading for Blast from the Past is The Ivory Key. This is a book about siblings, and I think it's about the siblings reconnecting. So they have become distant from each other, but because of something they need to reconnect, aka Blast from the Past. Vera needs to find an artifact called the Ivory Key, but in order to retrieve it, she must reunite with her estranged siblings who have taken very different paths. I'm actually quite excited about this one. I think the cover is beautiful. And yeah, I think this can be quite fun actually. The next prompt is to read a mixed media, any book with some sort of mixed media in it. What I've had on my TBR for this prompt for the last, I want to say four rounds, like all of the rounds I participated in Tropical Readathon, I think I've had this book for this prompt <laughs> on my TBR and I've never read it. And that is Gemina. So it's actually quite perfect that my punishment prompts worked out in a way that I need to read Gemina for my punishment prompt and I need to read Gemina for <laughs> the Tropical Readathon. Damn it, I'm gonna do it this time. Perhaps it should be the first book I read or something. Like, I'm gonna freaking do it. It's mixed media. I've shown this off so many times because I keep talking about it in my TBRs. This is a young adult sci-fi uh, taking place in space. They are on various like spacecrafts and stuff and the story is told through documents, chat logs, uh, surveillance footage, random pages, photos, like all of that. Like it's documentation and it's super cool. It's the second one in the Illuminate file series. I adored Illuminate. It was so much fun. I gave it four stars. I love the characters. Like it was hilarious. And I'm hoping that this will be even better. We're following new characters in this one, although I think the characters from Illuminate will have some cameos. And I think it would be a really good time. So even though it's a shanker, even though it's over 600 pages, I do feel quite confident that this will be a quick read, mainly because of the format, because of the mixed media format. It took me two years, but I'm gonna freaking read it now. Next prompt is to read a book with an apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic trope in it. And for this one, I plan on reading New Hunger by Isaac Marion. So this is the prequel to Warm Bodies. So I'm reading Warm Bodies, I'm reading Burning World, which is the sequel, and I'm also reading New Hunger, which is the prequel. So all of those three I hope to read in August. It would be so much fun if I can do that, because I remember loving Warm Bodies so freaking much, both the movie and the book. So I hope the other two books can live up to that as well. This is a trilogy, actually. So there is a third book called The Living, I think. And it was released like four years ago, in 2018, I believe. But I can't find it anywhere. I don't know. I need to do more research for where I can order it, because... Uh, I don't believe it's on Amazon and I don't believe it's on any of my like Swedish bookshops. Next prompt is to read a book featuring found family. This is a trope I love and I do have a long option, a difficult option for this one or an easier option. Now the book I would love to read for this prompt actually is Rule of Wolves, <laughs> which is the sequel to King of Scars. And you might be thinking, well, Charlotte, have you even read King of Scars? No, <laughs> I haven't. I'm hoping to read it now in July, actually. I need to finish my current read and then I actually plan on picking up King of Scars. That will be my next read. So hopefully I will finish King of Scars before August and then it would be great if I could pick up Rule of Wolves, actually. Typically, when we talk about found family and the Grishaverse, everyone thinks of Six of Crows, which it definitely is, but I've already read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. From what I've heard from many, is that King of Scars, like this duology, is also found family. Another option is actually to listen to the book The Foxhole Court. No clue what it is about, other than the fact that it is found family and it's available on script. Some other options I'm considering is The Gilded Wolves and A Long Way to a Small and Angry Planet, but these are neither available on script or at my library. A third option I have considered actually is Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. I have not read this one, I want to read it, mainly because I borrowed it from a friend like a year ago, but I'm not certain if this is found family, so please let me know if you think that the Percy Jackson series is found family. If it is, I think I'll go for this one actually. The next prompt is to read a book with the celebrity trope, meaning that one of the characters in your book needs to be a celebrity. A book that I thought I would read for this one, which was first like my initial idea for the book I would read for this one, is 
Carrie Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This will be Taylor Jenkins Reid's newest release and it's about a character that is actually featured in Malibu Rising. I think Taylor Jenkins Reid's books are so entertaining, so much fun, always about like the famous people and like celebrities and stuff. So this would be perfect. Carrie Soto is like a tennis star who was the best tennis player in the world and then she stopped competing but now she wants to make a comeback i think so definitely hitting that celebrity approval but the issue is i thought this book would be released earlier and i knew it was being released in august but apparently it's being released on august 30th if i even were able to get a hold of this one instantly i would have two days to read it if it was possible i would love to read this book for this prompt another book i have considered to read is americana by Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I know I butchered that and I'm sorry. It's about this woman who runs like a blog where she discusses race and racial issues, I think. And this blog becomes very famous, so she becomes very famous. It's apparently great. I don't know that much about it, other than it's also not a long book. I've requested it from my library, so this could be an option. Another book also that I'm considering to read, which I also requested from my library, is Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I have never read Riley Sager before, so this could be fun. It's about this famous building or something, or a house or something, an apartment, I don't know, that is owned by famous people and is in a neighborhood with famous people. I should probably have considered more how my punishment books could work out with these prompts. If I can make them work, I will. Next prompt is multiple po, multiple point of views. I'm certain that some of these books Perhaps American Gods or Box actually have multiple point of views. But <laughs> another suggestion I saw on a website for this prompt is Furyborn by Claire Legrand. I've taken off the dust jacket, but this is what the cover actually looks like. I don't know, it looks like it could be fun. I think it's like desert vibe YA fantasy. No clue, but apparently there are multiple poses in this one and also a love triangle. The next challenge is to read a book with bookish themes. A book I would love to read for this one that is being released in August. I think it's bookish theme. Babel by R.F. Kuang is being released, I think the 8th of August or something like that. And I would love to read it. The issue is that this is actually a book I will be getting with Illumicrate. They have announced that. That's not a spoiler, really, I think. Hopefully. Sorry if I spoiled you. And usually, because I don't live in England, I get my Illumicrate books a bit later, usually by the end of the upcoming month, and they usually send their books by the end of the month as well. We once again have the issue of me not actually getting the book in August. Another book I have considered to read though is Book Lovers, also by Emily Henry. The final common challenge to read a book for is retelling. I typically don't really enjoy reading retellings or I struggle with them, especially if they are really obvious. I have a few options for retellings. If I aim to listen to an audiobook, I think I will read Of Princess and Promises by Sandhya Menon. This is a sequel to Of Curses and Kisses, I think it was called. It's once again about these teenagers at an elite boarding school and there is some minor magic in it kind of barely i don't remember so this is like a retelling of the frog prince i don't know anything about the story i just know that i enjoyed the first book enough to be intrigued by the second book in this duology so that's what i'll read if i aim to go for an audiobook but i have two options for physical books as well first we have the girl in red which was very recently gifted to me it's a retelling of red riding hood and I've been wanting to read Christina Henry for a while, actually. So I'm very excited about this one. And the second option I have for retelling is Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. And this is, I guess, a retelling of Mulan, actually. It's about a tailor in disguise. So genderbender tailor. It's pitched as Mulan meets Project Runway. I don't need to know any more than that. That's my tropical read of on TBR. It's possible that some of the books I'm reading for my punishment prompts will work for the tropical readathon, like I already got Gemina there, I got The Great Gatsby, the others might work as well. It is a very chunky TBR, I don't believe I will read all of these books, I truly don't, but I, I am in a reading mood and I am very optimistic currently about August. I think August can be a great reading month. I'm excited, please keep your fingers crossed for me, root for me, feel free to share if you have read any of these books that I've talked about, or if you plan on participating in the Tropical Readathon or any other readathon for that matter, I would love to hear about it. Let's go team mystery horror thriller. We're gonna do great. 
And I'm very excited. Also, wish me luck regarding these punishments because I'm gonna need it. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Please take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye! You gotta just go for it. Don't think about what comes.